various locations via the miracle of Skype, it's the 40th anniversary season of the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailey, co-hosts Brian Schmidt, P.J. Noodleman, and producer Dangerous Dan Margetta. Call the show anytime at 414-421-7901. And now, the creator and host of the fastest hour in radio, Todd Bailey. Sweet Chicago right there. Hi, nice to have you. Speaking of Chicago, our uh, our on-the-road team is overlooking the road course right now from the Congress Hotel, 131 years in business. And Dan and Brian, uh, you've got the best seats in the house, don't you? They're pretty good, I guess. A pretty fun weekend. I mean, it's the second year coming back. We did this last year because nobody knew what to expect, and it was all kind of cool. This year, everybody kind of get to see the whole thing laid out because we haven't had to deal with the rain and stuff. And I think it's been a good time so far, don't you think, Brian? Yeah, it has. Yeah, decent crowds here, um, for what, for what you can tell, you know, because most of the, most of the seats are sold for this event and they're not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but different clientele, different type of people here. But, uh, all in all, it's, it's an interesting weekend, a very different mix of what you got. You got your, your, your regular fans. Which are few and far between, it kind of it seems, and then you got a lot of the new people out here, so it's it's definitely interesting. Well, we'll talk a little more about the experience as the program goes along. We will be uh, racing starting at four o'clock. The green flag is a late green. Uh, NBC Channel Four in Milwaukee will have it. Um, the forecast is for eighty-two degrees, just a little bit different than it was last year. Although at four o'clock there is a twenty percent chance of rain, um, but it does not look like it's going to be anything near what it was last year. Um, it might be a scattered shower or something like that. And so it could be a, a little sh- delay, but shouldn't be an issue from what I have seen. Um, this is going to be an interesting for so far. I mean, it is the Shane Van Gisbergen show. He qualified, why should I tell you who qualified fifth before the pole sitter? Kyle Larson is on the pole at 90.168 miles per hour. He got around there at just under a minute and a half, 87.836 seconds. Uh, Van Gisbergen fifth, but he won yesterday's Xfinity race after an absolutely spectacular show. He and Larson went at it for lap after lap, and uh, even though... Larson didn't finish second. He actually ended up but third. I thought it was just a hell of a show. It was. That was an incredible race. And, you know, that the, the people that were, you know, into the race and were watching it, I mean, it, it come down, I was over on the front stretch, and, and every time they come around the corner, Van Gisbergen is like the, the favorite here because this is where he made his name. And him and Larson would be coming by side by side. They must have done it, you know, six, seven consecutive laps early in that race. And, yeah, it was it was interesting to see those two guys. They put on a hell of a show. You know, it's kind of like the haves and the have-nots because it's 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 racing on this type of a course. Just ask Justin Allgaier can be very treacherous. So you got the guys that have you know the guts to really go after it and charge those corners, and then the, the rest of them are kind of like whoa. Yeah, Jesse Love kind of got a little bit overwhelmed, I think, at the end of that race. He he had to lead there at the end, and all of a sudden these guys just come, and he's like, holy cow. And he said afterwards, I wasn't aggressive enough. And you can see who who has the experience on these courses, like Van Gisberg, and even Larson, too, when they were going back and forth. I was on the other side of the course on the backside, turn 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and those are some pretty tight corners. And you got to really dive bomb it in there to make that move. And they were doing that on each other, and the other guy that was getting, you know, on, they had the lead going in, was kind of stuck on the outside, was actually – respectful enough that to see it coming in and to get through the corner without wrecking the whole field. And that was what made it kind of spectacular back here on this side of the course because there was some really tight quarters racing in there. And that's where Jesse Love, I think, didn't realize a couple of times they're going to go flying right by him because, yeah, you can go in that deep and make this corner if you, if you do it right. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty amazing. Uh, those two uh, have a lot of respect for each other, and they're giving each other a thumbs up as they're passing each other. I mean, how when does that happen? You know, mutual respect, that's a thing of the past. 
maybe it's a thing of the future too. Um, SVG ended up winning the thing as not a big surprise. I'm just surprised all those New Zealanders that were down there in Chicago cheering for that guy, Brian, uh, or maybe not, huh? Just because he made his name there. Yeah, pretty much. He's the name that they, that they recognize when when you talk about this event after last year. So. Um, he's getting really good T-shirt sales this weekend here. I'll say that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, if you saw that race and you see him kick the rugby ball in the stands, Brian almost caught that. Yeah, that was close. That was only about four rows from me. It came right at me, and if I, you know, would have been more aggressive and a lot younger, I might have went after it. But uh, a kid got it, and that's who, that's who should get that thing. Aggressive and younger, and and moved like you used to, right? That's yeah, where the younger right. part came in. Um, he uh, absolutely sounded like the crowd did uh, really appreciate it. You know, the thing about Van Gisbergen, um, since we never heard of him a a year ago and when he won this thing, um, I think that, you know, here he is 35 years old. And you think to yourself, this seems kind of late in a career to throw, you know, to leave your life behind in New Zealand, move to the U.S. and start learning how to drive a stock car on ovals. Um, But after watching this guy, you have to understand the absolute talent he is. Um, There are a couple things that you just can't teach. Car control and instinct. And this guy has it. And it's like car owners were very, very attentive after watching that guy with the car control he had a year ago. And uh, now... You got, you know, think about it. Kyle Larson saying, yeah, you know, uh, I liked watching. I learned so much from him and all that. Uh, Don't don't believe that for a second. I think Larson, um, he he knows what he's doing here, doesn't he? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. And that's what's going to be kind of neat to see. I think Kyle Larson came up to Shane Van Gisbergen's level on the road courses. And because Kyle wasn't was a road course guy, he was, he was a dirt guy and, and slain around the short tracks. But he's got the road course part down. And he's focused on that. And he, I think he's got to his level. He can race with Shane Van Gisbergen. Now let's see if Van Gisbergen can learn from Larson on the oval way and race Larson on the ovals the way they race each other on the road course. That'd be really cool to see going forward. It would. Um, we're going to have to find out exactly what kind. I mean, he does have talent. We understand. But, you know, road course racing and oval racing, if you never saw such a a, a distinct difference between those two uh, uh, before, um, you can kind of you kind of bleed with Van Gisbergen as he's learning this oval stuff. It's uh, pretty interesting anyway. Um, this is, uh, as we mentioned, Van Gis wins yesterday after putting on a great show. And... Um, uh, we're going to be watching a 75-lap race today. The stages are at lap 20 and 45. Why is it, Brian, that we didn't do away with a caution? Uh, weren't we? I mean, we talked about it, and I just was I sleeping when they changed it back. It was after Indianapolis last year when that race ran green to checkered in, in record time. So they they had no restarts. And, you know, restarts are what breed the excitement, so to speak. So after that green to checker race at Indianapolis last year, they said that was it. And we went back to this, which is fine. Um, I think the, re- the restarts were very entertaining yesterday here as well. And, you know, you can get really spread out on some of these races. It's kind of what was, you know, Road America's demise there that year. They had no caution for that second one. And it just got so spread out and, and mm-hmm. mundane that it wasn't the excitement wasn't there. So that's why they that's why they did it. And, I, and I'm okay with it. I, I think the restarts are, are pretty cool, especially in road racing. They really need to speed up uh, these cautions under um, on road courses, though, because it takes so long to get around the racetrack. Um, you know, they should open the pits the next time by and get everybody in and out and relined and let's go again. Uh, and depending upon you know, commercials. depending upon the TV setup and when the TV is, like here, we had one caution yesterday that was only two laps because. In, before you get into turn, is it, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six is where they have the, the cone where the choose rule is over there. They didn't have the choose rule a couple of years ago either in road course racing. We got that now. Um, and then they're going to come around and go green. So they can come by the start finish line and not necessarily be ready to go green and realize you have everything cleaned up and they can give them the one to go on the other side of the course, come around and get the green. So there, there was a caution yesterday that was literally only two laps. It was kind of nice. So they have sped that up a lot. Our Chicago boys are poised and ready in the Congress Hotel with a cocktail overlooking the racetrack. I mean, what's not to like? We'll be back. Get ready for the return of IndyCar. 
to the Milwaukee Mile. The NTT IndyCar Series returns to Milwaukee August 30th through September 1st for the Hy-Vee Milwaukee Mile 250s weekend. Don't miss the first IndyCar event at the historic One Mile Oval since 2015. Featuring an NTT IndyCar Series doubleheader with races on both Saturday and Sunday. Check out the free fan fun zone with live music, great food, and family fun all weekend long. Get your tickets now at WISTATEFAIR.COM and join us for a Labor Day weekend celebration at the Hy-Vee Milwaukee Mile 250s. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit BonafideSafe.com. This is The Herd. Wow, 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 wow. With Colin Cowherd. Yeah. If you want to see the Caitlin Clark effect, here it is. Bad team, small market, and they are worth more, the Indiana Fever, than the Los Angeles Sparks, the Dallas, Atlanta, Washington teams, and almost equal to a team in Chicago. This is The Herd. Weekdays 3 to 6 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Okay, so there's this elephant sitting in the corner we have to talk about, Nashville. It was kind of good news and bad news last week. Um, It was uh, a 31-lap overtime is when they got done with the five overtimes. We ran 31 extra laps. Joey Logano uh, ran 110 laps on one tank of fuel, aided by 41 caution laps late in the race. And, um, you know, I, even though I have been uh, kind of vocal that I, I'm, I'm not the biggest Logano fan, I have to hand it to him. He did what he had to do to win a race with a car that wasn't as good as other race cars on the track. And he uh, he really did a hell of a job to, uh, to win that thing. Um, I, I just can't believe... We went over by 31 laps. I'm still scratching my head over that one, boys and girls. That seems really strange because, I mean, they used to – didn't they first did that? They had like a, a limit on that. We only do so many overtimes. They must have threw that out because it that makes great TV, I guess. But how did Joey Logano go 110 laps on, on a tank of fuel when the – it's supposed to be 80, I think, because is the fuel window. I'm not sure how that happened. And, and you know, they got – there's like – IT groups from all, all the manufacturers here that, that that figure that stuff out and strategies during the race. I, I bet they were even scratching their head how that came about. I think for most of those caution laps, his car wasn't running. So that, that was the biggest thing. He'd coast and coast and coast and coast and then fire it, and it would run for, you know, literally a couple seconds and then coast and coast and coast again. So that, that was how he did it when you have all those caution laps going on there. And he even had enough to do a burnout at the end. That was the strange part. <laughs> the one that I was most disappointed in was, was Corey LaJoy. Now, Corey LaJoy pitted so much later – there's one point I'm watching it doing a restart bo- going, Corey LaJoy might be able to win this race. And then for some some un- unknown reason, they pitted and took himself right out of it. And I'm like, I mean, is this guy ever going to have a chance to win a race? I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it's they just find a way to, to mess himself up every single time. His teammate, you know, finished second. But, you know, it's like, oh, when is, when is he ever going to get a chance to win a race? I, I don't know if he can ever get. I mean, that was probably his best chance. Well, you know, for those of you who thought NASCAR hated Kyle Busch, I'm still scratching my head over how the hell do you get involved in a caution and get the fourth position back again and have NASCAR said, well, he, he maintained speed. He wasn't, a, he wasn't he involved. Stopped. I, I, he was stopped on the track. I don't That one was a real head scratcher. Yeah, well, <laughs> and it was quite the head scratcher for the NBC announcing team, too, because they were certainly uh, uh, trying to figure that out as they were going along, and uh, NASCAR had to come up with a special explanation for them. I, it just. The old, uh, what four letters are those, PJ? That we always, E-I-R-I? Yeah. <laughs> the last page. <laughs> uh, by the way, um, the uh, Hosevar incident, it must be very difficult for Jeff Burton to keep his mouth shut when his kid, who's now officially losing his ride to Josh Berry in the 21 car, uh, gets 
taken out under caution by Hosevar. Um $50,000 fine and 25 points, not like that 25 points is going to really matter when you're that far down in points in the first place. Even though Josevar has had, I think, an overachieving rookie year and shows that he belongs in these cars, his head still next needs to be extracted from uh, the dark place, doesn't it? Kyle Larson was very vocal about that, as was Ryan Blaney. They both spoke out about him always driving that way. He's been that way in every series he's been behind the wheel of. Um, and I found that to be quite interesting to have because those two are kind of become like the, the elders, if you will. I mean, former mm-hmm. champs, for them to say something like that, that's pretty powerful stuff. So I don't know if Josevar is going to wise up or not. It has been the knock on Josevar, not his talent. He's good with a microphone in his face. Uh, he has some talent. It's just that sometimes his foot isn't connected to his brain, and uh, he does some really stupid things. Uh, I did not. Did anybody see what happened that pissed him off so bad? I, I don't know what caused the I – mean, I saw what happened under yellow, but I think a lot of that what, what brings out other guys speaking out is during the races, there's a lot of things you don't see on TV. We don't mm-hmm. even realize what's going on. Uh, it may even be for position, maybe for, for you know lapping somebody. Guys know who races who well – under all the conditions, and I think and it, it just builds up after a while when the same guy is kind of, maybe he's not wrecking people every week, but he's just doing things that are against the unwritten rules of driving etiquette kind of thing, and I think it stands out, and then when they get a chance, something like this happens, and they all come out of the woodwork and say, yeah, he's been doing this a while. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's like a senior going to prom for the first time and getting lucky afterwards and just no control when he gets <laughs> excited. <laughs> he just, he's an excitable boy. You know, Rich Pickle said this years ago racing with him that, uh, uh, you know, you can get in Rich's head and then he, he has, he's watching for you to make stupid moves. And, uh, he pointed out some of the stuff that Josevar did before he ever moved up into any of the major series. So I've been watching this guy and, uh, uh, I see that he was right. Anyway, it was it was interesting to keep an eye on and uh, cost him fifty grand. And who pays that anyway? Does that come out of the driver's paycheck or does that uh, the, the team pick that up? Yeah. What is I guess it? Team somewhere. Spire. Yeah. <laughs> I think it kind of depends per team. Some teams yeah. might actually make their driver pay it. Mm. Well, it yeah, some be, but... some teams have like a fine account or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's... He's starting 13th today in that Spire car. You know, I mean, the guy can run on a road course, too. It's 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 hard to like him because of how he acts, but, damn, he's got talent. I mean, he you does. just can't take that away from him. And that's and, not that's not top-quality stuff he's driving there, either. Well, you know? it's better than it it's was. It's better than it was, yeah, yeah, but still, you know. And as I mentioned, Josh Berry was announced to drive the 21 car uh, to nobody's surprise, I guess. But, interestingly, he is doing his best to bring Rodney Childers with him as crew chief, there is an established Penske crew chief by the name of Jeremy Bullins in that 21 car right now. And uh, um, there's two schools of thought, at least for me. Uh, Bullins has done nothing himself, I don't think. He's just trying to get uh, blood out of a turnip, and that's just never going to happen. Um, but uh, Rodney Childers, if you could add him somehow, would be bringing a major talent to an organization. Uh, the question is, you know, does does Penske want to shell out and bring a different crew chief in? Bullins really hasn't done anything except non-perform with the guy he's with now, right? Now he's done a lot, I think, in the past as far as taking drivers that don't really aren't really established. He was, I'm trying to, he had some wins with some other drivers. Because they did the Penske crew chief shuffle for a while, right? Was was he yep. with was he with Blaney? Um, geez, I, I believe he was with Logano for a while. I think Might before have been that, Logano. though. Okay, before Logano. Well, uh, Childers is too good to if if Childers didn't go with Josh Berry over to the twenty one car. What are some of the possibilities for Rodney Childers? I don't. I, I would like to see him go to Richard Childers, honestly. I mean, I, I I know they need something to turn that program around because it's kind of going south in a hurry here, and they got a talent in Kyle Busch that can really make this thing happen if if they put all the pieces together. 
Uh, I just to me, I, I think Kyle Busch and Rodney Children work pretty well together because it's a couple of veterans and kind of and racers. I don't know if that'll ever happen. That's just me pulling my coloring book out and, and saying this would be really cool if you can make this go. I, I don't know where else though. And does he even want to continue to be a crew chief? Maybe he would take on a role kind of like a, an overseer of you of the programs. Yeah, or you know maybe that could be Jeremy Bowen's next step too. You know, but Childers is too good of a talent. It just let uh, go away. And if Barry wants to bring him along, I think they should find a way to do that. Uh, we'll be back on our Chicago vacation right after this. Miller Sales and Service of Random Lake is where to go for a trailer no matter what you're hauling. Tom and Jerry Miller have been selling trailers from B&B, Trophy, and Bravo for over 50 years. Quality and integrity is what put them on the map on the corner of 57 and K since 1939. Home of the number 89 dirt and asphalt cars of Brad Miller. That's Miller Sales and Service. It's where to go for a trailer just 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. Call them, 920-994-4358. The summer heat is on, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscape needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. The place to be this Saturday night is the Fair Park in Plymouth, the third annual Wall of Fame ceremony to honor drivers and track supporters for their contributions to racing at the Fair Park. On track, it'll be the late models, sprint cars, Grand Nationals, B-Mods, and the Vintage Mods. It's a special night, and you'll want to be part of it. The season is moving along quickly. Don't miss any action. Opening ceremonies at 6. We'll see you there. Love it. Embrace it. Right now. The, the, the Dan Patrick Show. Dan Patrick. You could go back in history and watch one athlete play. Well, I'd say Babe Ruth. Any chance it would be disappointing. But you're right. If I'm watching a baseball game and he goes one for four with a home run, I'd be like, mm, yeah, okay, he's good. <laughs> Catch up old Curly is fastball. Yeah. The Dan Patrick Show. Dan and the Danettes and you. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. You know, when I think of NASCAR racing, I think of a guy holding an igloo cooler full of beer and, uh, and a T-shirt with, you know, Kyle Larson's name on it and a baseball cap and shorts. And uh, and a stain of barbecue on the front of the T-shirt. Yeah, isn't that just perfect? And, you know, I'm thinking that just doesn't seem to me to be a typical downtown Chicago-looking race fan. Brian, how does it compare? Yeah, I mean, it's not. Uh, last year with the weather, we didn't really get a chance to be amongst the people. <clears throat> so yesterday when I had the opportunity to to get onto the front stretch and, and see the start of the race, and have it, the whole race it turned out to be, uh, on the front stretch area there, it was a completely different clientele than what I'm I'm used to. I mean, you have... You know, women in, in dresses and hats. I mean, not quite to the Kentucky Derby <laughs> level, but similar, you know. And you have, you know, guys in, you know, hey dude shoes and, and like slacks and a button down dress shirt, you know, holding drinks in their hand. It, it was completely different. Now, there were a couple. There was a <clears throat> a couple in front of me that had Shane Van Gisbergen shirts on and had the scanners and were the true, you know, race fans. But by and large, that's not the type of folks you have, you're, you're seeing at this particular event. It's more of a, Kind of a wine and dine. It's an event. Type. It's a party. Yeah, a party. Yeah, you know, a wine and dine type thing. I mean, they're 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 excited about Shane Van Gisbergen, and probably because it's the name they recognize. You know, if they were here last year, but mm-hmm. it's not what you would normally see at you know if we were over at the Oval. You know, for and, example. And the entertainment has been pretty impressive, actually. Oh yeah, I mean, they had you know the concerts here again. That's something too when you see how that concert went off last night and when they introduced the drivers. I mean, I think it was even Bob Pockris that says, this is NASCAR in 2024, like with a question mark. It's it's different. It's so different. And I guess the biggest question I have is, you know, the folks at NASCAR, if I were to, to be able to, to sit down and ask them, I'm like, is what is your what is your end game with this? You know, you're bringing all these people here to this. Are these the people that if we move this race back to the Oval, are they going to go over there and watch it? I don't <laughs> think so. 
Thank you, you know, so I mean, yeah, you're getting them here this weekend, you know, and they're and they're spending a lot of money to 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 go to have these seats and and these hospitality things. But are you going to gain fans, or is it just the event that they went to that? You know, they're not going to come back to if we were to go back to Road America or the Oval, or are they going to go to Indy in a couple weeks? I don't think so. Yeah, and see, what they did is to, a, lot of, a lot of people don't really know the drivers. And a lot, Kyle Larson can walk around and, and amongst the crowd here, and nobody knows who he is, and he's probably the most popular or biggest name right now in the sport. Sure. But what they uh, between the concerts, it was the Black Keys played first, the Chainsmokers played after that. Between the concerts, they had all the drivers up there in their driver's uniforms, and they did like driver introductions, kind of like introduced the crowd, the, the music crowd that's here. Hey, these are the guys that are racing tomorrow. Here's a chance to get to know them kind of thing. Wow. I mean, even the PA system here is different. Um, you know, Jim Trado was on it, and then – the regular announcer, I, I can't think of the name off the top yeah, of my head. He does Tim, I can't remember. Tim, yeah, he does Daytona. He does Phoenix. He does a lot of them there. And then they have some local guy that does like Chicago. He's a Bulls. Chicago morning guy. Or, morning or guy, yeah, with them. And I mean, they even like a car blew up yesterday in practice, and they're putting Speedy Dry down, and they're like explaining to people, you know, what it is over the PA, you know, and it, it's 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 okay for some. I don't know how many people are listening to it, but for those of us that are regulars, we're, it's kind of annoying. I think what got me was after the practice session, the Xfinity cars went out, and before the Cup went out, they went and they blew the track off with the, with the track blowers, and that guy was like, "Why are they Why are they drawing the track off?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, oh my God. Yeah, it's it's, and again, this is stuff I painful. did not last year. Yeah. So I I don't know if they did the same thing last year. I I don't think they they did as much because. Obviously, there you know there was a lot of delays and, and other things to talk about, but track um, drying was completely different last year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's different. They're they're trying. I will say they are trying really hard to get everybody that's here to understand what's going on, to understand the drivers, to understand it. I mean, I'll, I'll give them that, but it's it's a little alienating for your for your pure fans, and I don't know how many of the actual people really. Are into uh, that. Ryan uh, even watched part of that race literally from the Fountain Club. He got in the prestigious Fountain Club. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I noticed all the the wine and diners and the and the different people up there. And interesting. Uh, yeah. So different. so the real question is, guys, this was a uh, an agreement between the ex mayor and NASCAR that it was a three year deal. The uh, first year was successful, even though. They had floods for the race, unprecedented record rainfall they had to deal with, and it was still a successful event. And NBC had to love it because it was their highest-rated race of their entire schedule. Now, this year, a completely different story, beautiful weather, um, no excuses. The, uh, there's no concerts that have been rained out like they were last year. Um, but next year, third year, um, what's the media been like down there? Are they uh, are they supportive or are they critical? Well, everybody says this is going to come back, but you got to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And those pieces are NBC isn't covering this part of, portion of the schedule anymore like they did before. This is going to be the streaming part when Amazon Prime is on, um, you know, and then it switches over to the TBS. I think does some of it too. Um, so this was NBC's baby. So are you going to move this to a different time of the year? The cool part about having it on this weekend versus last year, last year it was the weekend before the 4th of July. You had a lot of other things going on here. Our hotel was full of volleyball people at a big volleyball event. You don't have any of that this year. This is about it. The crowd outside of the track, the regular clientele that's here daily, is not as large. So it makes it a lot easier to maneuver around and, and items like that. They're taking deposits for 2025, but there's no date. So mm-hmm. – when would they fit this into the schedule? Does NBC want to cover it? Is it going to be part of the playoffs? I don't know if you want this as a playoff race. I don't know. Can you? The Bears play in September. You yeah. Know. I mean, you'd have to. The, the NFL schedule is out already, so you know when that is. I mean, would, would Labor Day weekend be a time to put this on there? Bears, you know? Yeah. I don't know. And they really don't know. Supposedly what about the schedule daylight, gonna... Brian, if you put it later in the summer? That's another big thing. Yeah, you can't start this race at 5 o'clock in the afternoon if you're going to be running this in September, you know, because it's dark by 730. So you'd have to move it up to an earlier start time. And then you're going head to head against, well, if it's Labor Day weekend, the NFL doesn't start yet, but college football, that's their big kickoff weekend. So I don't know. I don't know where this is going to fit in. Milwaukee that same weekend, too. Snow tires and this run year, it next in the winter. Year it's not. Next year, the IndyCar race is the weekend before Milwaukee. IndyCar already has their schedule out. Oh, so. okay. So we have, it's actually, um, just to be clear, it's a 4 o'clock green flag today, not 5. Um, but still kind of a late for what we're used to. Why? I'm on, I mean, is there some logic behind such a late start like IndyCar this? IndyCar is before today. Right, NBC's putting the IndyCar race on, and this is going to go on right afterwards for TV-wise. And then you have your concerts going on before the race. 
uh, was mm. Keith Urban and Laura Lena. Oh. Yep. oh, yeah. Wasn't she a, like a, a American Idol contestant or something? She uh, was on The Voice. The Voice. Oh, Blake oh. Shelton. Oh, okay. Uh, show what I don't watch. We're glad you're tuned in. Hang in there with us. Get ready for the return of IndyCar to the Milwaukee Mile. The NTT IndyCar Series returns to Milwaukee August 30th through September 1st for the Ivy Milwaukee Mile 250s weekend. Don't miss the first IndyCar event at the historic One Mile Oval since 2015. Featuring an NTT IndyCar Series doubleheader with races on both Saturday and Sunday. Check out the free fan fun zone with live music, great food, and family fun all weekend long. Get your tickets now at WISTATEFAIR.COM and join us for a Labor Day weekend celebration at the Hy-Vee Milwaukee Mile 250s. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. This is Two Pros and a Cup of Joe. Yeah, baby. Mike McCarthy is getting fed up with Jerry Jones and the influence there that he's got in Dallas. This is self-preservation. If it's coming from the Jones side, you're trying to find a way to move on if this team underperforms. Two pros, LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, and a cup of Joe. Jonas Knox. Weekday mornings, 5 to 8 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Well, last week with Joey Logano winning it, uh, became the 11th different winner. And uh, that now, you know, every time there's a new winner, it kind of shakes things up a little bit. There's less uh, cars with a shot to make it on points. Martin Truex, as far as I can tell, uh, can have a lousy rest of the regular season and still make it. He's 146 points to the good but um, after that, you know, we've got uh, Gibbs, Chastain, Busher, and Bowman uh, that are right now behind Truex and the ones that are in without winning a race. And then uh, you got uh, Bubba, Briscoe, and Rowdy right behind them, although the points aren't as tight as they once were. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, it wasn't a stretch by any means that Logano was going to win a race eventually this year, even though he had been running kind of crappy. But uh, he certainly made a case for himself. But um, <clears throat> not exactly shaking up the points, but uh, now there are less. you you, you got to have to win a race. And between Gibbs, Chastain, Busher, and Bowman, uh, who's going to win one out of that group? Well, and don't forget, too, that this race is kind of a wild card. Next week, Pocono is a bit of a wild card. You have, what, Michigan, I think, is part of the deal. I mean, the next stretch of races, even Daytona in, in, in August, is a total wild card. Yeah. It's a uh, super speedway race. So, I mean, anything can really much happen in the next couple of weeks as far as control that whole point thing into even more out of kilter what it is if somebody farther back picks up a win. There's uh, four drivers. There's a 40-car field today, by the way, not 36 like it usually is, meaning four cars are there just for fun and amusement because they don't get paid very much. Uh, A.J. Allmendinger, who is a great road course racer, is there in the 13 car. Austin Hill, who raced yesterday and ran up front in the Xfinity race, is in a Childress car, number 33. Uh, Joey Hand, I am not... Um, real aware of this guy. He's in a Roush car, and I know you guys know who he is, right? Yeah, he was an IMSA driver. He was part of the IMSA GT4 GT program when they had that going on a few years back, and a uh, very accomplished road racer. Uh, Kaz Grala will be in the 15 car today, the Boston driver. Uh, I don't know I don't know that he's a necessarily a road course guy. And Josh Balicki is there, good news, bad news. He is, uh, he is a road course racer, got himself a, a double duty thing. He ran yesterday and uh, spun a couple. There was a couple of Balicki cautions yesterday. Um, and he is in the 66 car today. I'm thinking we shouldn't really watch for him to be running up front. Is that a fair assessment? No, that, that that's not one of the better teams on the circuit. And just watching practice yesterday, you'd be surprised at how 
the cup cars handle the bumps on this course, just main, normal bumps. They have a lot more travel than the Xfinity cars. I noticed that in the practice. Josh's car had a way lot of travel. It looked like a, bron- a Bronco out there. It was all over the place, uh, up and down, kind of porpoising through the through the section where I was at. So, I mean, it, it, Carl Long's team shows up. I mean, they don't have a charter, obviously. Um, they're here. I, I don't expect much out of that car. He failed inspection three times, was not allowed to qualify, so he starts in the back. They also booted his car chief out, plus he has a drive through penalty, none of which will affect his ability to win the race today. They're all penalties, but I don't think we should worry about it. Uh, that 66 car isn't really capable of uh, very much. But, you know, he's in the race, and that's very important. Making it a 40-car field. Uh, speaking of going to the rear, Oh, we got some cars going to the rear. Did you guys see that list? There's a pretty extensive list. Brad Keselowski, the six car, uh, Corey LaJoy, uh, Byron, Blaney, and uh, Barry. <laughs> Byron, Blaney, and Barry. Sounds like a law firm. Um, they're all going to the back, too. So um, if you got enough guys going to the back, are you really starting from the back? Well, I mean, this place, I think you got to start up front because it's so tight, it's hard to pass. You're going to have to use a strategy way past a bunch of cars. Uh, now, I mean, Byron's issue was steering, right? I think they had to replace the whole steering in that car, and that, that was something pretty major. Um, as far as the other guys, I, I don't know. I, I, you're going to have to flip the script somehow on the pit stop deal by pitting when nobody else does so you can be out front when everybody else comes in. And you're going to have that option with the stage brakes. So having the stage brakes, again, that gives you that. You could pit. The pit closes two laps before it, so you could pit three before. Try to hopscotch those guys when those guys come in. Under the caution, now you're ahead of them. So you're going to have to play that strategy game, and you get two shots at it during this race to, to make that work. I you like know? when there's strategy like that. I think that's okay. what makes it interesting. Options. we got to do what we have to do for track position. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. I think the cool, cool part is this track is large enough that you don't lose a lap. I mean, 2.2 miles, most places you lose a lap, not here. You'd be able to get in and get out. I think Allgaier did it yesterday in the Xfinity race. He got out. Uh, you see them disappear behind turn one into turn two, and then the field is coming out of turn 12. So you do have enough time to pit and not lose a lap uh, right before caution. Brian, you mentioned before uh, with Chicago having uh, – we we assume that the third year of the contract uh, is going to be uh, used. It will be exercised, un- unfortunately. Uh, we don't know where it's going. And all of a sudden we're hearing some other names come up again. We've heard them in the past – uh, are they beating the drum louder for Mexico City and Montreal, and why? Mexico City sounds like a sure deal. Um, sounds like that would come from possibly a Richmond race, losing one of its two dates. Montreal is out there. A lot of people are saying that. Where would that date come from? So you got to take something away if you're going to gain one, you know. Um, there's been talk if you were to have a street race not here, but in the future, the city of Pittsburgh has been floated around this weekend that people said maybe you could have a street race there in the future. Um, I don't think we're going to have more than one street race ever. So as long as they're here, that would not be an option. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't see them leaving Iowa. I mean, supposedly they wanted to go to Montreal instead of Iowa, and the NASCAR denies it, said Iowa's been on their radio- radar all along. Again, you have to find a date. And in the clash, they're talking like Bowman Gray, right? Yeah, Bowman Gray in February maybe, which would be pretty wild. People say, oh, my God, can you run Bowman Gray in February? We used to run. Richmond in February, right after Daytona, and that was always kind of cold, so it can be done. Uh, schedule's supposed to come out Wednesday, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I did hear a little bit of talk about Road America, but nothing really enough to say, yeah, I think it's going to happen. Uh, it's just been talk, but we'll see. Yeah, I was in the elevator with Bob Pockers yesterday. and asked him if he thinks the this Xfinity Series is going back there, and he, he kind of shrugged his shoulders and says, I don't see why not, but then again, he says everything is in flux this year, so who knows. Bowman Gray for a legitimate race. Well, it's, it's a clash, clash, an exhibition, but still. Hey, hey. You're going from the 80,000 seat Coliseum to what is that? About 14,000 there? 18, 18,000. 18 is going to be an intimate group. And yet you don't have to travel much. I mean, all those teams are right there, and it's going to kick off your season, and you're guaranteed some action. And but You can't think- pass. It's going to be a redneck paradise. <laughs> you can, you can <laughs> yes. pass if you got a good bumper. Yes. What we have here is the exact opposite of what you're going to see at Bowman Gray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no kidding. I uh, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with trying stuff. They they seem to think that uh, you know just trying Road America was a really good idea, and uh, you know it sure seemed like it was a good place to race. So after two years of just spectacular attendance and interest, 
we're pull the plug and go to Chicago. I, uh, they must know what they're doing. They're much smarter than we are, that's for sure. We're really glad you're tuned in. We've got some results for you when we come back. The place to be this Saturday night is the Fair Park in Plymouth, the third annual Wall of Fame ceremony to honor drivers and track supporters for their contributions to racing at the Fair Park. On track, it'll be the late models, sprint cars, Grand Nationals, B-Mods, and the Vintage Mods. It's a special night, and you'll want to be part of it. The season is moving along quickly. Don't miss any action. Opening ceremonies at 6. We'll see you there. Miller Sales and Service of Random Lake is where to go for a trailer no matter what you're hauling. Tom and Jerry Miller have been selling trailers from B&B, Trophy, and Bravo for over 50 years. Quality and integrity is what put them on the map on the corner of 57 and K since 1939. Home of the number 89 dirt and asphalt cars of Brad Miller. That's Miller Sales and Service. It's where to go for a trailer just 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. Call them, 920-994-4358. The Summer heat is on, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800. Or visit PMFLandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Love it. Embrace it. Right now. The, the, the Dan Patrick Show. Dan Patrick. Oh! That job is sort of the Cowboys' job of the NBA. Everything is under the microscope. Everything. And you got LeBron in there as well. So, J.J. has to be able to filter out all of the naysayers, the criticism. There's going to be so much gossip here. The Dan Patrick Show. Dan, the Danettes, and you. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. And now the LTN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. Holiday week of dirt racing across the country. We'll start Monday night. Wilmont had a special for the holiday week. The IRA wingless sprints were the headliner. Tyler Cuxhouse was your winner. And the 604 wing sprints were there. Ian, Ian Steer was your winner in that one. Also Monday night up in Proctor, Minnesota, the XRSS Super Late Model Series was there. $15,000 to win. Bobby Pierce grabbed the victory. Tuesday night, the XRSS Super Series moved to Superior's Gondic Law Speedway for another $15,000 to win. Nick Hoffman. Grab the money there. Harrisburg, Arkansas, the old number one raceway for the UMP Summer Nationals. Tanner English grabbed the win there. Wednesday night, Luxembourg had a holiday special. The IMC modified winner was Jaden Schmidt. The stock cars went to Mike Mullen. Ogilvy, Minnesota, the XRSS Super Series. $50,000 to win on a Wednesday night before the fourth. And Bobby Pierce continued to pad his pocket, grabbing a 50 grander there. Thursday night, West Memphis, Arkansas, the Riverside International Raceway for the UMP Summer Nationals. Rodney Melvin was your winner. Spring Valley, Minnesota, the Deer Creek Speedway. They go for 50, night number one for the World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Model Series. $7,000 to win. Ryan Gustin was your winner. USRA Modifieds went to Jim Chrisholm. Friday night, Putnamville, Indiana, the Lincoln Park Speedway for the USAC Amsdale National Sprint Cars. Logan Seavey was your winner. Night number two at Deer Creek for the go for 50 went to Brandon Shepard in an absolutely spectacular race. Uh, getting the win in that one. USRA Modifieds went to Brandon Davis. Paducah, Kentucky Friday night for the UMP Summer Nationals, 10,000 win. That went to Tanner English. Everything in Wisconsin was rained out on Friday night, as you can tell. It seems to be the reoccurring theme here. Either Saturday or Friday rains out in Wisconsin. We can't seem to get both nights ever in. But last night, lots of racing. Francis Crick, Wisconsin, the 141 Speedway, had 210 cars sign in in their six divisions. And the Modifieds, Cody Schrader was your winner. Stock cars, Tyler Wilson, and the Grand Nationals went to Kenny Richards. Up at Sturgeon Bay, the Hill Raceway, the IMSA stock cars were the headliner. Snell, Dan Snell Jr. was your winner there. Shano in the late models, Troy Springborn. Modifieds, Marcus Yari. Stock cars, Trent Nolan. Up at Eagle River, they had a special for the MSA 360 Sprints since Plymouth had off last night. And Ben Schmidt grabbed the win up there. Ashland, the ABC Raceway for the Wasota Modifieds. Andrew Mackey was your winner. New Richmond, Wisconsin, the Cedar Lake Speedway. The late models went to Jake Radetzky. The Modifieds, Caden Blauser. USRA Limited Lates, Josh Wallstrom. Putnamville, Indiana, night two for the USAC Amsdale National Sprint Cards. Logan Seavey made it a sweep. 
Dresden, Ohio, the Muskegon County Speedway for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, $20,000 to win. Devin Moran, the hometown man, picked up the win there. And finally, the big money race of the week, Spring Valley, Minnesota, Deer Creek Speedway, the World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Models. They go for $50,000, $50, to win, and Bobby Pierce made it one spectacular week. I believe that's $107,000 he got this week, something like that. It's a, it a pretty good week for oh, even more than that. He had another thirty on Monday. So, yeah, a lot of money for him there. The USRA Modifieds went to Jake O'Neill. Sprint cars had the week off. You notice no outlaws, no high limits, no IRA. But they get back in action Wednesday in the makeup race at Beaver Dam. And next weekend, the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars are at Wilmot for a two-day show Friday and Saturday. And that is everything for this week. On the pavement, um, Thursday night, the 4th of July, was rained out at Wisconsin International Raceway for the white race of the red, white, and blue series. Uh, that is rescheduled for this coming Thursday instead. However, side note, Ty Majeski will not be able to be there due to his NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series commitments. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to put Riley Stengem in that white car or in the car for the white race or not. Um, on the national level for Thursday night, the Z-Max Cars Tour was at Caraway Speedway. It was a slobber knocker. Brent Cruz was your late model stock car winner. William Byron also ran, and he was P2. Uh, the pro late models, Tristan McKee, was the winner at Caraway. And then also the Arca Menards West Series ran at their doubleheader, if they had out there. Irwindale Speedway, Sean Higginori was your winner of that race. That was uh, Fred, a popular win, huh? Well, he also won on Saturday out there again, so he swept both races. And uh, he's just, he's a knuckle dragger. I'm sorry. I, I just don't have a lot. the dismay of the announcer there, I understand. Well, yeah, the announcer was a track promoter and also involved with another car owner. He's a car owner of a car that I think his kid drove and uh, was not very happy about it, was very uh, biased on the microphone and dropped an F-bomb as well. Uh, so. As the guy is climbing the fence on the front stretch, you hear a big F-U come out of the announcer. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was aimed at Billy Venturini. That's the weird part. What a what a wild scene! But hey, it gave Arca a little bit of uh, publicity. There you go. I guess yeah. Any news is good news, right? Yeah. Uh, Friday night, Grundy County Speedway managed to get in their series. It was also a slobber knocker. Uh, the Big Eight series. Michael Bilderback was your winner of that. It was a Toby car, just so you know. Uh, last night. Dells Raceway Park ran. Tristan Swanson picks up his first super late model win. Brad Worthen was the 602 winner. Uh, Grundy County also ran again last night, and Eddie Hoffman was the super late model winner. Jefferson Speedway late model winner, Stephen Scheel. And then uh, we already covered it. Irwindale Speedway again. Uh, Sean Higginori was your winner on that. Oh, wait, and then Dells was a Tundra Series event. Yes, it was. Sorry, Tundra. Um, and then, of course, flashing back to Slinger last weekend, Todd, I'll toss it over to you. Yeah, it was uh, the Prunty Show. Alex uh, held off Uncle Dennis to win it. Um, the track acknowledged uh, Monday after the race that they made a scoring error, um, which is, you know, nice that we actually admitted it. The bad news, because you didn't catch it on time, is Dennis Prunty was leading the points, and he's still leading the points, and he should have been uh, scored as being uh, involved in an accident, and they put the wrong car at the back. And, uh, you know, it makes a big difference. But, uh, you know, um, we, we, we do our best, we acknowledge, and we move on, and that's how it works. Tyler Ramadka won in the late models. It's the first time I got to announce Tyler winning a race. That's his second win uh, I wasn't there for the first one and uh, looked awfully strong in that uh, dear old dad's car. I think dad would have liked to have driven that car, but he's he's probably by now acknowledged the fact that Tyler is the future and uh, got out of the car and gave it to the uh, to his son, Tyler. Tonight, the Midwest Truck Series begin three straight days at Slinger Fe Speedway. It's like Slinger Fest. We've got uh, the trucks tonight. Of course, we've got an open a uh, day for practice tomorrow with free admission. And then, of course, Tuesday is the uh, Slinger Nationals. And um, I, I have to say, uh, the job that Dan Casey does, along with Craig Zeller and Dave Oslus, um, selling $20 lap sponsors 
they are already at an additional ten thousand uh, dollars, and their their aim is for twenty before they're done. Um, and uh, this United Race Fans of Wisconsin, it's pretty interesting. Um, they have a fifty fifty raffle for lap six last year. The lap was worth a thousand bucks. You can only buy two tickets. It's a ten dollars uh, entry fee. You can only buy two, and it's all going to be given away for the leader of the nationals Tuesday night. Whoever leads lap six from a thousand bucks. Can you imagine? There's tracks racing all over the place that don't even pay a thousand bucks to win, and it's just for lap six. It's just fantastic. We'll be back. Hang in there with us. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Get ready for the return of IndyCar to the Milwaukee Mile. The NTT IndyCar Series returns to Milwaukee August 30th through September 1st for the High V Milwaukee Mile 250s weekend. Don't miss the first IndyCar event at the historic One Mile Oval since 2015. Featuring an NTT IndyCar Series doubleheader with races on both Saturday and Sunday. Check out the free fan fun zone with live music, great food, and family fun all weekend long. Get your tickets now at WISTATEFAIR.COM and join us for Labor Day weekend celebration at the Hy-Vee Milwaukee Mile 250s. This is Two Pros and a Cup of Joe. Yeah, baby. Mike McCarthy is getting fed up with Jerry Jones and the influence there that he's got in Dallas. This is self-preservation. If it's coming from the Jones side, you're trying to find a way to move on if this team underperforms. Two Pros, LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, and a Cup of Joe. Jonas Knox. Weekday mornings, 5 to 8 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. And welcome back to the program. Before we get too much further, I want to acknowledge that not one of us picked Joey Logano to win last week at Nashville. So um, it's it's. I realize it's very easy to take Van Gisbergen, but... I, I'm sorry. I think he's going to win the race, um, and I'm going to throw it out to you three who are going to uh, either agree or fight over the scraps. So Dan, that's who you fuck take? you. Go ahead. And you can All agree right, with I'm me. Leave, I'll leave the obvious out there for somebody else to pick. I'm going to kind of go on a little bit. A little bit. First time winner, Ty Gibbs. You know, I thought about mm. it. Brian? That's a good one. That's actually who I was going to take as I'm looking you at this. Can. You just can't. <laughs> you you we think he's going to win? Just say it. i got to change it up a little bit here. Um, I'm going <laughs> to go with the fan favorite here, and the crowd in Chicago will love it. Tyler Reddick and the Jordan brand car. If you get a look at that car, that is a beautiful-looking car with Michael Jordan on the side of it. I think Tyler Reddick might get the win here today. And PJ. Well, yeah, I left him. I'm taking him. Kyle Larson. See, when I pick Kyle, he doesn't win, and I really want to see him win because I'm here, so that's why I'm not picking him. <laughs> he, uh, you know, they, he's been called the the best race car driver in the world. I don't know if he's the best, but he certainly is the most versatile. Um, he can win in anything on any track or at least run up front. Uh, here we are in stock cars on a road course, and, um, you know, he's he's just got so much talent. And he acknowledges the fact that he learns by racing with Van Gisbergen, which is just amazing to me. Um, but, you know, yeah, whatever it takes, uh, this would be the thing. A couple, of, a couple other notes. Um, Ricky Stenhouse uh, has been married. His wife's name is Madison, by the way, not Danica. It's Madison. And uh, he and his wife, uh, Madison, had a, a baby this week. And <laughs> I don't know. what. The, I, whatever happened to names like, you know, Gary? The kid's name is <laughs> Stetson Steele Stenhouse. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Stetson Stenhouse is the newest of the Stenhouses. Uh, another little note that uh, I may have um, m- not mentioned before. Uh, you know when Chase Elliott just won and had Hooters on the car and it was such a big deal and he did a Polish victory lap at Hooters, you know, and it was such a big... 
Hooters didn't pay its bill and got dropped by it's, Hendrick. It costs more than just some free wings to get in these cars now. Yeah. <laughs> kidding. Oops. Oopsie. Yeah, they they must have known. Okay, we won. We don't have to pay the bill anymore. What could happen? He just kick us off the car? Well, actually, yes, that is what happened. Remember uh, when they had the movie that that Brad Weber did with the Ellen Kalicki movie? I got I got ten free wings from Hooters. That's what I got paid for that. And I got to use the coupon twice, so I got twenty. <laughs> That's beautiful. See there, mm-hmm. it does pay to be a Hooters fan. Um, Ricky, <clears throat> I. I'm I'm sorry about this. I said Ricky because um, I see Stenhouse and I note for that. And right underneath I have Fenhouse because <laughs> because Fenhouse, our boy from Wausau, Wisconsin, has himself a ride for the next two truck races. He's going to be racing next week at Pocono. <clears throat> I don't think that uh, uh, he's ever, ever been at – Luke's never been to Pocono, right? has he? I don't know that that he was in the ARCA race with that one. I don't believe so. Yeah. Well, this is – it's a tricky triangle. They call it that for a reason. It's a tough track to get around, and we'll see what kind of talent Luke has in that thing. Plus, the next week, uh, the trucks will be at IRP, and he's going to be in that thing too. So um, uh, now he's going to be a teammate of Ty Majeski. Do you have any idea, PJ? Uh, is this – is it a decent car, or is it uh, – is it just uh, whatever else they had laying around the shop? Are you talking about the truck? Yeah, I mean truck, not car. Yeah. Truck. Yeah, I think everything that they have at Thor Sport is good. Okay. It's that 66 truck that runs. I don't know. Yeah. Connor Jones has been wheeling it a couple times. Yeah, Connor Jones has got oh, yeah, yeah. good finishes it. out of that. Well, you know, at this point uh, in Luke Luke's career, uh, he's going to need to have some pretty good finishes. And so I, I, I just cheered. He's such... Such a talented young man and such a nice kid that I would really like to see some kind of uh, spark come out of a relationship there and have him uh, do well in that truck because uh, it's hard to get in a truck that you don't race very often and do well, but he's going to need to have a a good finish. And uh, without bringing money, this is a good ride, right? Yeah, he was our most recent guest on the Racing Nuggets podcast, and I had asked him about... Um, gelling with that crew, and he said that he has been uh, connecting with them as much as possible here as they prepare for the race, and I think that that's a good sign. Speaking of racing that's, nuggets, you know, hey, Todd, late. you're talking about a spark? Yeah. NASCAR had their electric car going around the track here this morning. Yeah, we didn't really hear it from our hotel room because you're not going <laughs> to. It's uh, 8 o'clock this morning. They wheeled it out here and, and did a couple laps with it, and Interesting looking unit when you see it from the outside. It doesn't look a whole lot different, but under the hood, it is completely different. And do I do we think it's really going to go this direction. I hope not, because it's very. If you ever watch the Formula E series on TV, it's very similar to that. Sounds like it when you see videos of it going around. Like I said, we couldn't hear it from up here. You could hear the the Mustang pace cars rumbling around here, but you can't hear the the EV uh-huh. cars. So I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to have a completely separate series like you have with just these cars, have at her. But don't take away what we have. That's a pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. By the way, uh, the LT. And if you can't listen live here on the Big Nine Twenty, remember you can download our podcast. Uh, you can get it uh, all major platforms, including iHeart and iTunes, and listen to it anytime during the week. That's the way of the 21st century, from what they tell me. So that's uh, pretty cool. By the way, uh, PJ, you mentioned Loop. Uh, is that the latest uh, one that's on, or is that coming up Tuesday? Nope, that one is already available. Tommy White, the flag man for the Midwest Tour, is our next guest. Who I happened to stand next to on pit road yesterday. Unreal. Oh, figure. And that's where he tipped me off to that. Ah, very nice. Well, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Uh, hey, listen, you guys, if, if it's possible, have a good time in Chicago in there for the race. <laughs> and, uh, Definitely. And, uh, Dan, I guess we'll see you at the Nationals Tuesday. In fact, I'll see the whole team at the Nationals. Oh, and just keep in mind, real race cars have doors. 
even if they do climb in through the windows. Let's Talk NASCAR is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our engineer is Matt Losey. And for all of us involved with the program, we appreciate you tuning in every week, and we'll see you next week, everybody. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash LTN Radio Network. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.